All right, we're, we're recording. Okay. Um, so this is uh, September 6th, uh, uh, Robot Builders Night Virtual and for DPRG. Um, and uh, we're going to start off with Ray. He's got something he wants to show us. And it sounds like a gold star, but we'll see. Let's go, Ray. You can only hope. You can only hope. At least, if not a gold star, at least entertaining. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay, I have to present. And screen. Okay, there we go. Okay, whoops, that was not what I wanted. Hmm. Uh oh, how'd that happen? Ah. Okay. There, present. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay. Very simple PowerPoint. Anyway, I have been playing around with um, an Adafruit part. It's the AS7262, and it's a six channel visible light slash color sensor breakout. And the, the it seg segments visible light into some of the standard colors so red orange yellow green blue and violet and it does it with um interference filters and those are those have like a center frequency uh you know that corresponds to the different wavelengths of light this is actually reverse order because red is closer to 650 so this is the violet end so probably violet blue green yellow orange and red okay. um, the part has uh, I squared C and you are interfaces I'm using I squared C um, that's a picture of the part and it's you know you are an interface on this side I squared C on this side um, that's the actual sensor it's it's actually kind of centered in the very center of the part um, so you can mount it and have it be centered mm -hmm. if, you, you know, if you mount it that way. Anyway, um, Adafruit also makes another part. It's a 10 channel. Um, it's the AS7341. Um, basically, it adds indigo and cyan. So these are, you know, so you have eight colors and then the other two to make it up to 10 are clear and near IR. And this is in comparison to the, um, the part that I have and, and have been experimenting with the AS7262, which is six channels. Um, I thought this was kind of odd. Um, the, the devices that are used on these parts are made by the same company, it's, it's AMS. Um, but they have different definitions for different colors like here Violet is 450 here it's 415 um, you know the blue is 480 here 500 here green they're they're pretty close uh, five uh, nanometers away from each other the two yellows are 20 the orange though was 30 which is getting to be quite a bit um, red is also 30 um, so I, and I, I try to find, you know, if um, if there were set definitions for colors mm -hmm. and, you know, like some, I don't know, like an ANSI national standard or something, um, there doesn't seem to be. I, so I think it's, you know, you pick your center frequency and what the band is for each of these and, you know, you call it, a, you know, a color. Um, anyway, so I had some videos. That I wanted to show. 
So Ray, Ray, quick yeah. question: Are yep. both of these parts available from Adafruit? And you just yes, they are. And you just happened to pick the sixty-two, the seventy-two, sixty-two. Yeah, I've had it. I've had it for some time. I actually got it when um, I started doing six can and can can soccer. Okay. Um, because you know, I thought, okay, I can just look for orange, and um, if I see orange, I'm looking at a can or pointing at a can. Mm -hmm. And I found out that it wasn't uh, the. It required a lot more light. It works much better out in like daylight or sunlight which is kind of the opposite of what, you know, the cameras, I think, you know, they can, well, the other thing too, to do like blob detection, um, you have to turn off um, typically auto white balance and auto contrast. Mm -hmm. And um, so you don't have to do that with this part. It'll, you know, in shadow or in direct sunlight, you know, it sees the cone. Um, I think I have to stop sharing to do this next thing. I made a couple of videos. So you should be able to show the videos on sharing. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I can't see it. You know, the mm -hmm. only thing I see is my presentation here. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to share again. find where my videos are and they're in a certain order okay stop okay okay um, Here, go there, share again, entire screen, there, okay. <clears throat> okay, so I've been kind of experimenting with it, that's my cone. Yeah, right there. Was right there. Yeah. Yep. See the orange color. Now, where so is this? Not... Where is the sensor, Ray? Is that in your, yeah. in your right hand, pointed down? Uh, left, left hand. Yeah. It's actually thirty-three feet. I measured it. Maybe thirty feet or so. And you know, so I can I can use it to detect it at least that far away. Okay, so that one um, was in the shade where the cone was. It's like if yeah. I start it up again. That one's in the shade. Okay, so this one, I don't know why that comes up, it's useless. Okay. That one's in the sun now. side of it, it turns a different color. There's the orange and green, which is probably grass. So there's bright orange. I'm pointing right at it. So even in bright sunlight, it can detect it. Uh, and we are about one, two, three, four, at least 30 feet away um, from it. So I can use that as a as a directional sensor. Okay, all right. Quick question. So that's yeah. a three D printed barrel, right? 
right yep. and right that forward. you've stuck on the front of it. Is there any lenses in it to focus? Uh, yeah, I have one lens. I'll, I'll show you that after this, this next video. Okay. One more. sensor inside of a basically a holder yeah right um, there mounted on a servo there's the servo and i've got the um cutie pie driving it and on um, the cutie pie is the neopixel and when the neopixel sees the orange color or any other color for that matter it'll it'll try to replicate that color of the neopixel well i don't know what i was talking about and but when it sees the the orange from the, the sensor neopixel. It puts the, that same color on the Neo Pixel. Mm -hmm. Just 20 feet away. And when it finds it, it should light up there. It goes just lit up orange. So the first scan it does is 180 degrees. And then it uses where it found the orange, which in this case, let's see if I can get it all in. See it flash orange there when it's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the neo pixel. So it found it. That's pretty good. And that's twenty feet away. Yeah, and that's that I measured that, you know, before I said it or ran the video. So yeah. anyway, so it works pretty good. Um the farthest I could detect was sixty feet, which is amazing. Um the I tried um different experiments with um, okay let's see if it gives me back the screen here yeah different experiments with you know different numbers of degrees between steps and at um, you know I was trying to figure out okay if I'm using GPS to guide this thing to a cone you know what what's that kind of radius of uncertainty and uh, you know according to gps.gov mm -hmm. um they say it's um, a 16 foot radius of uncertainty i don't i don't know if the better gps units um you know that include um you know glass nos and i don't know it's not boudet i, I always think of the you know <laughs> the thing yeah. in a bathroom yeah. uh, maybe maybe it is boudet and maybe yeah, that's how i do I do. Okay. I do. I do. Okay. Anyway, so um, they may and be glow nos, <laughs> not glass <laughs> nos. <Glass -nost. Okay. laughs> my acronyms. Anyway, so sixteen feet was supposed to be the average, you know, um, I guess accuracy or, or you know, kind of area of uncertainty. So I figured if I, um, if I, you know, say the robot was twenty feet away. Um, it should, you know, be able to find the cone if it's just looking for orange or the orange color. Um, anyway, so I'm going to share one more time. Screen. There. And there. Um, anyway, so the, uh, um, you know, I was wondering, you know, based on our discussion, you know, last week, last meeting, did I did I find the holy grail of cone detectors? And, you know, the it seems like we have a lot of issues with, you know, playing around with pixie cams, trying to find the right color ranges in all lighting conditions and, um, you know, hopefully not with uh, with orange leaves in the fall. Um, I think, um, oh God, what's his name? Um, our treasure, Steve, um, you know, doesn't have, I, th I think he's got a lot of pine trees on his land. So that's, that's probably a good thing. So, you know, with this, the intensity of the light doesn't matter. You know, if you just make sure that the, the reading for orange is greater than that of red, blue, and green, 
it should indicate that you're looking at mostly orange. Um, there's no finicky camera adjustments, like, you know, trying to find the ideal range of colors, um, no complex AI model development. Uh, the cost is pretty reasonable, only 20 bucks versus 70 for a Pixie 2 or 65 for an open MVH7. Um, the, one of the things that I took away from this is, um, if we wanted the OpenMVH7 or the MaxPy or any of those that you can do, you know, some uh, OpenCV um, type manipulations with an image, um, I think the best thing to do would be to put an orange filter, an orange bandpass filter, instead of like neutral density filters or other filters. Um, because once you, filter out all the wavelengths that you're interested in, like in this case, orange, um, you can do a lot of other manipulations with it. You can, um, you know, say, uh, I'm going to set a threshold for, you know, change it to black and white, um, set a threshold, um, and then do, um, you know, blob detection on that. Uh, once it's, you know, once you've thresholded it, and, um, I would think it would work much better than a neutral density filter or, um, and you could, you could, um, you know, enable, um, the auto contrast and, and, um, you know, uh, automatic white control, auto uh, white balance, I guess. Um, so, you know, thinking about that, it's, it seems to work pretty good by itself, but if you still wanted to use one of those other cameras, um, I'm, I'm gonna try to get some orange bandpass filters just to see how well it works. Um, I think it should work pretty good. I think it should work as well as, um, you know, these uh, individual detectors with uh, color filters on top of them, basically to only let certain wavelengths of light through. Um, and this this seems to work pretty good. But, can you, uh, Ray? Can you go back to two slides, please? That one there. Yeah, I want to see. So this is called an AS seventy two sixty two. Yeah. Or an AS seventy three forty one. Yeah, I don't I don't have this one, but it's it's a similar device. Um, this one is is newer. Um, you know, it's got the quick connectors on it. Um, it gives you 10 channels versus this one giving you six. What about cost? Um, I think they're about the same. Okay. This actually, well, no, actually, I think this one's a little less expensive. Um, around 15 or $16, I want to say, mm -hmm. versus this one was like 1995. Oh, both of those are trivial amounts. Yeah. I mean, that's not yeah. three bucks, you know. I guess the real question is... Uh, does the additional spread of I mean spread of colors really help you any? Uh, I don't know that it do you, does. Yeah. Do you I get the individual readings? Otherwise, does it tell you how many purple, how much blue, how much green, how much yellow, how much orange, how much red? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I tried to find out what it was, what the units were. Was it you know, like so many lux or something? Yeah. Um, in low light, it's in the it's in the hundreds. In you know bright sunlight, it's in you know it's below ten thousand. Yeah. So like actually probably below five thousand. Yeah. Um, so it seems in range. Um, <clears throat> there is a little um, just a simple plastic lens. These are really nothing special. I think I got them at Tanner's. Give me a second. I'm going to make your, uh, be, I'm going to pin you. All right. So go ahead and show it to us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is it. And it fits. It's like a, you know, a press fit into um, that black barrel here was a previous version so it just kind of you know is press fit in there I don't know if you can see it in the end yeah you can see it 
So do you try to focus it on the sensor? Yeah, it's it's pretty close to being focused. It's a little a little off, but I found that that actually worked better. And it's fairly directional. Yeah. Um, the is that um, is that convex on both sides? Uh, yes, it is convex on one side. One side, and so straight yeah, on one and convex on the other. Yeah. And, and you've got the convex side pointing out. Yes. And did it's, you, did you it's buy that separately from the from the board? Say that again. Did you buy that separately from the board? Yeah, I got these. I think from Tanner's. Yeah. Um, you know, he just had them laying out in a box, not individually wrapped or anything. And they, you know, just simple plastic lenses like this, they they will give you. I think it's referred to as chromatic aberration i think yeah the different the light otherwise they focus different lights at different distances yeah and you you can get like kind of a rainbow look around the outside edge of the of the image mm -hmm. um but you know that's what you get for i don't know i think okay. they were 10 for a dollar or something yeah so the sensor is at the square square end right yes yeah it's uh and i actually you know this was like my first pass i just did something simple yeah. Uh, you know, this, this face was to mounted on the servo and um, I just used black electrical tape on the other end to, uh, yeah. uh, you know, to focus it. But the, the cone that I used is here. And um, so let's see if I can do this here. You can kind of see the image of the cone. Yeah. Yeah in the end of the lens and it's i had it in a little bit further but uh so it's fairly directional i mean if you get you know that's maybe a couple degrees in either direction and it's and you know the black the back of it is black box. i'm surprised that you have is the lens got that long of a focal length and i guess the question i have is you know i was thinking you were using the barrel to as a light shield but yeah. apparently not. Well, yeah, I am. I mean, it's, you know, it's a... How deep is it? It doesn't look very deep in there is what I'm getting at. Oh, in the, yeah, I actually have it closer to the other end. But um, the the focal length is about two centimeters. So mm -hmm. it's not that far. So this is, okay, it's 52 millimeters long. So the lens is, you know, about right here. Okay, I got you now. Two centimeters yeah. from the back of the yeah. where the thing is, uh, the sensor. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I remember that box of lenses. I don't know oh, if yeah. I, I don't know if I picked any of them up or not, but I remember the box. Yeah. Um, hey Ray. Yeah. Yeah, I missed some of that. I had to do some stuff. But is that is that the same thing they're selling on Adafruit? Uh, it's that, an Adafruit sensor. Yeah. It's, now yeah. it. The lens, the sensor, the lens you had, you made yourself with the three D uh, print, or well, I made the kind of the holder for the for the sensor and the lens. Yeah, that's three D printed, and I just you know made it so that the the lens it's just like a you know a friction fit in the barrel. Um, you know, I kind of stick it in there and push it oh. back wherever I want it, it stays in place so um, well I'm looking at that sensor is that 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 chip or right in the middle of the board the very middle yes, yes. It's the sensor. yep if you look close Mike it's got a hole in it yeah, yeah. I see it I see it I'm looking at it right now so that's real interesting mm -hmm. yeah and you're saying that's better that's working better than the pixie cam and all that you're oh yeah are you well, it's, it's a lot simpler. It, you know, um, I just look at the um, the red, green, the blue, and the orange, and if the amount of light it sees in the orange channel or column or whatever you call it um, is greater than red, green, or blue, I'm I'm saying that it's orange. It's seeing the can, or okay, in the cone. Can you use that in the in the six can or whatever? 
Well, when I when I experimented with it, then it was it seemed like there wasn't enough light in the room. It wasn't you know it needed much more light to work. Um, and I don't I don't know at the time if I was playing around with these lenses or not. I think I just had you know I was using uh, acrylic tube, right, and kind of experimenting with that with different things, and I had. Uh, different lenses on those. Um, this is a lens from a, um, a compass, actually. But you can kind of see as you pass over things how yeah. you know, it means the edges of things really, really well. So okay. uh, anyway. Does uh, does like Adafruit have a little tutorial on how you did yours or? Did um, you yeah, um, we can, if you want to, um, we can look at the code. I'm just, no, I mean, as far as, as far as making the lens and things, or how did you come oh, to that? Oh, making this? Yes. Um, just how did you know to do that? Oh, um, I can give you the STL file if you want it. Um, hey, Ray, do you have an, ins I mean, ins in you I'm have a thing of a thing of verse thing? Do you have uh, a thing of account? Thing I don't have a Thingiverse account, but I could just, you know. Um, oh, I could print one. I'm just saying, how did you know to use the lens and all that? Is there a, is there like a tutorial that tells you to have to use the lens? Uh, oh no, yeah. no. Um, but I, you know, I know that, like this this type of lens, you know, it it's kind of culminating or focusing and. Oh, um, cool. In fact, I think, let's see here. Yeah, nope. I, I was going to try to demonstrate the focal length, but I think uh, if I just hold it, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. Yeah. I don't even know if I can see it. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's going to be on the back side because the things. Anyway, that's focused on my finger and it's about two centimeters above it but i don't think you're going to be able to see it because the light's behind me right yeah well so if you if you just put that that sensor i mean i'm just real curious about this because so if you use that sensor without without the you know without the the, the telescope uh and all that stuff what does it see then without the lens how does it focus in is it just is it real i don't think it has a focus there's I, no there's no you know i think it's just a flat cover on the sensor yeah i think it's it's probably useful for things like you know if you've got a you go to the paint store you know and you put your sensor in front of and then all it can see is the is is your paint sample you right know? so right. it doesn't uh, require focus if that's the only color you see in the field it's probably useful for stuff like that yeah okay but um, That's really interesting. With a little help, you know, a little three D printed or object. You, can, you could have you could have some sort of uh, color coded product passing in front of the very close to the sensor. You know, where yeah. all it sees is a particular color. Yeah. Uh, if you want to identify things. Okay. Yeah. That's, nice. That's really Anyways, nice. So if, uh, you know, you That's think we're right. running out of, running out of time for uh, you know, Robo Magellan. Um, and you're having camera issues, you know, just get that's one of those a, sensors and <laughs> that's good to know. That's a, a to me, that's a gold star, even though it doesn't have any wheels or nothing. Yeah, well, I'm not yeah, sure. No. We, you know, I don't want people coming back on me. He's definitely a black, a black star. You got a black, solid black, black star. star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you to kick the kick the the plastic bag, you know. Uh, box that you had it mounted on if you'd have kicked it down you know that would have been a goal of, you know oh yeah <laughs> i thought tripped over the whole thing <laughs> the dirt. If you're having problems with the lower light environments you could go with a larger aperture lens yeah performance yeah yeah oh yeah 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 it would concentrate it more well that's pretty I cool know. uh and, and uh you know that's definitely worth uh some experimentation with uh yeah, yeah. I mean, anyway, I don't know if I want one. it my as my primary, but it might be great for, you know, one more, one more opinion, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the nice thing is, it, it was, if you actually picked up something at sixty feet, though, 
you know yeah there's a point where you would to me there's a point where once you acquired target that you know gps be damned you know you're going to it now what the gps yeah, right. would tell you is that uh you're going in the wrong direction boy you know or something like that yeah so, so i need to, what you're telling me is i need to make sure that i go by walmart a couple of days before and pick up a four dollar 99 cent bright orange shirt and wear it around and, you know who wants to pay me for it no, no. No. I, i'm sure at 60 feet i'm very conish looking yeah I'm, you might be yeah. all right the one thing i'm curious about but i think you know since you have you have the numeric values of all of all of the different lights yeah. um you know it's probably easy to normalize it and take you know get it under control but what i was thinking was you know, if, if we were going to the same first cone we did last year, and we're not going to, mm -hmm. but if we were, you would have ended up seeing that red barn that was in the background. Oh, okay. Maybe, but it should discriminate between red and orange. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I look, well, I can, I can show you my code if you want. Um, it's not, not very long or complicated or anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That. That. Takes a second for Arduino to come up. Damn it. Do we know it's taking a little longer to come up? Maybe meat's hogging the resources or something. Come on. Okay. Um, I'm going to share again. And, uh, Okay. Um, can you see that? Why don't you make the window bigger? I oh. don't know. I don't know if that uh, will help, but go ahead. And... Okay. More white space. Yeah. Okay. I'll slide on down and let's see what you got. So you got your servo. Yep. You got um, wire, wire for, uh, you got a couple of Adafruit libraries. Yep. Um, anyway, there's a uh, couple globals there. I'm actually not using the array. Mm -hmm. um, Dixie begin, servo attach. Okay, so those are just kicking off the servo and the, the AMS sensor. Um, Okay, so in the loop, it's just basically a for loop for the servo. Um, you know, position is start position, start position starts off at uh, zero, uh, and position is 180, and in this case, I had I was stepping by three degrees. Um, it looks, you know, tries to get the measurements from the AMS device it actually has to wait for a flag, a ready flag. Um, and then once it does, kind of as a shorthand, I just created these, um, you know, VI is violet, EL, blue, mm -hmm. GR, green, mm -hmm. yellow, orange, red, instead mm -hmm. of typing out all this stuff. Um, her Adafruit's initial program had a bunch of printouts for the values. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, this stuff is for the NeoPixel because it, it only accepts values between 0 and 255. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for the biggest, the biggest one is it, you know, is, so I just sent max color to blue, and then if green is bigger than max color, which was the blue, uh, it becomes the biggest. And then um, 
uh, compares that to red. If red is the biggest, then it becomes max color. And then, um, you know, I, I map the red, green, and, you know, red, green, and blue variables because that's what the, um, the NeoPixel has in it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a red, green, and blue LED, mm -hmm. um, and try to scale them down to, uh, you know, a zero to 255 number based on um, what the max was of those four colors, the, or three, co three colors. Um, and then it just writes out the pixel show is writing out the value. Um, so here I'm just, I'm seeing is, is orange bigger than green is orange bigger than blue and is orange bigger than red, whatever value it read. Mm -hmm. And, um, what I was actually looking for is, you know, is just scan from, um, right to left is, um, you know, where the first value was and where the last value was for orange. Right, and split it. Yeah, and then take an average and that should be the center center of it. Mm -hmm. um, that's one way of doing it. I think a better way of doing it is to um, basically do an accumulation of all the angles where orange was the biggest and then average those because you could have five or six readings in a in a cluster, sometimes it's, you know, there's a, it skips one or two. Um, and then, you know, you, you may get three more on the other side or something. Um, that's actually probably a better way, but that's not the way I did it. Anyway, so it, as it's scanning through the, the, the uh, degrees for the servo, um, you know, if it found first is zero, um, the, the first orange is what, whatever position the servo was in that it found the first mm -hmm. orange. And then I set found first to one, so it only enters this one time. Mm -hmm. And then the, um, the last orange is um, the last time orange was the biggest. Mm -hmm. And so that's last orange. So that's a fairly easy way to do it. Um, so then to try to narrow it down, like the first scan was 180 degrees and you know, it's, it's not the fastest sensor in the world. So I wanted to limit the number of readings. You know, I don't want to do 180 readings each sweep, um, or didn't want to. Uh, so, um, I just said, okay, go two degrees, um, less than the first one. And mm -hmm. then two, two degrees more than the last one. Um, and you know, you have to adjust if it's, if it's becomes greater than 180, then, you know, you clip it at 180 and same thing for, you know, if it goes less than zero, you got to clip it at zero. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just took the, the center position as start position and end position divided by two. Mm -hmm. um, and here I was, I was experimenting with, uh, um, I just extended it, you know, made the start position because when, if you're using, you know, steps of three degrees, nine is a, you know, it's three steps basically mm -hmm. in one direction off the center and then three steps off the other direction and from center. So that's, that's pretty much it. That's all the code. And a lot of this is, you know, this is all to turn the NeoPixel on, which won't be necessary. And, um, so it's it's not going to be a lot of code to run no. it. No, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I like it because you know, like I say, I don't know if I'd want it as my primary, but it's definitely a nice backup. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, you could get more confidence in it if the more you use it. So, yeah, and I might, you know, I might find better lenses or, yeah, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah, a little little experimenting is not going to hurt. No. But, cool. Uh, Anyway, so can you describe a little bit more the difference uh, you were seeing in lower light or you said indoors, it doesn't work so well. That's what I heard. Yeah. Um, uh, when I was trying to use it for, you know, six can or can can soccer, um, indoor lighting levels were, were just too low. I mean, um, it, it didn't seem like it could distinguish or it was easily, 
uh, fooled or if two cans were next to each other they almost seemed to radiate orange like across the floor from the lighting I, I don't know if it was somehow part of the glare but it didn't seem to distinguish between two cans that were close together because of all the glare um, but in this case I mean you got an orange an orange can in the woods basically you know okay there might be brown tree trunks there I don't think there's going to be much orange in there not unless you know Steve's got a lot of deciduous trees and they're all turning orange or something well, you know he does have a pink flamingo that he's plant he plans to stick out there somewhere so we might have to hide those first uh, <laughs> I guess the other thing too is that um, I don't really know how orange the official cones are I mean, no, and all the cones, by the way, aren't exactly the same. Oh, they're not. Okay. No. Two of this them. This is a, you know, yeah. very uniform, pretty bright orange that uh, seems to work well. Yeah. I was, I was wondering if I could convince the rule maker if, uh, you know, those could be the official cones because no, they work no. good for me. No, no. <laughs> No, there's, we're going to keep with the cones we've got now, but they're getting, they've got a patina on them. So two of them, oh, no. two, two of them are uh, kind of a little lighter than the third one, which is a little darker. Oh. It's newer. So yep. uh, from a cone point of view, they're, uh, uh, they're not exactly the same. Uh -huh. But, yep. you know, they're, they're close. Yeah, I may may have to broaden it out to red and orange. Then or you're saying. Well, no, I think uh, I think your approach sounds pretty good. I mean, I just, you know, you may have to evaluate the peakiness of it. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know. There's red on one side, and what's on the other side? Yellow. Yeah. So I'm you guys. So you may be evaluating those three colors for yeah. a peak mm -hmm. and you know, you know you can check it out when we get there you know and you can take a look Ooh. at the cone and see if if it's more red or if it's more yellow i would say they if if i were looking at them i would say they might be a tad more to the red just a okay. little bit yeah yeah okay yeah well i've got uh i have you know just about all colors of that paper so yeah this is a yeah and what I'm thinking is though Ray what you might want to do is just collect a lot of a lot of data in different locations and then analyze the data itself yeah see there's the, the red and the orange yeah, yeah so that may work out yeah yeah but you know what I'm saying is take a look at at the spectrum and see which spectrum if you can it might help you get rid of some false false alarms too. Is what I'm thinking. That's that's something I'd like to get done way before you know game day. So yeah, you know yeah. it's a you don't want to be out there flirting around with colors and yeah, I know. changing bands and rating codes. Yeah, yeah. There's thought of, and yeah. Yeah, and there's thought of another application for it: a fruit ripeness detector. Yes. Yep. You know those it those guys that used to sit there and watch the individual beans go by and you know they you know, nod off because it's so boring. You know that <laughs> yeah. you could you could see the bugs in the beans because it's like a dark spot in the bean. You know. Well, yeah. if anybody's got a fruit orchard, they can design their uh, fruit picking robot. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, anyway, I thought it was you know. I guess I finally got to use my color sensor for something. You know, it was I think sitting it's there really for all those years. I think it's really cool. I mean, it looks like a, it definitely is a new approach. I mean, well, new to us approach. And, yeah. And uh, I'd be real, real interested. And also now, not now, you, you've got to go for Robo uh, Columbus, but later on, you might want to see if you revisit the uh, six can stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I could take a look at it again and see maybe. Uh, you probably uh, learned some stuff in this process. What what John said, maybe a you know a bigger lens or something, uh, you know, hang. You know, or maybe a or maybe a LED lens or a ring. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe you know stick one of these on the front of it or something. You know, yeah. really you know. 
Yeah. Cool. Inspector Clouseau kind of. I know. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's all I had. Okay. All right. Good go. Anybody else got anything? That was very nice. Nobody's talking. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say if uh, you know if before the contest, if people are having problems, maybe we can you know settle on a, a bright orange cone and you know a simple mm -hmm. simple method. But uh, yeah, what we might want to do is um, I think is this might bring up something maybe a month before the actual event. We meet down at the maker space, and everybody get a chance to screw with everything out on in the parking lot. You know mm -hmm. what I mean, or something like that. All right. Um, okay. Anybody else got anything? How about you, uh, Kareem? You got something to update? Uh, next week. Next week we'll have an update. Okay, Michael. Anything? I got a question, another question for Ray. That lens, where did you get that lens? Is there a special? You just that was a, go on Amazon you know, or something? A Tanner special. Yeah. He had a box of lenses there that, I don't know, I think they were like 10 cents each or. Right. I just picked a bunch up. Um, yeah, if you, if you want one, I could probably send you one. I don't know that you'll find them anywhere else. They're just. Yeah, they're um, just little lenses. I bet yeah. you could find them on Amazon or something. You probably could, yeah. Yeah. Are they are they plastic or glass? Plastic. Okay. They like kind of a little look like a little cheap magnifier. Uh, yeah. Glass. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but see, yeah. the reason why I keep asking because it looks like I might start pursuing that. You know. Yeah. So. Uh oh, it looks like John's got something here. What you got, John? Yeah, it sure does. Uh, you're you're muted, John. No, I'm mute. You're muted. Yeah, it's it's not ready yet. I'm I'm just building a, a test stand for my new robotic eyes. Oh, okay. So, so are those the lids are closed, right? The lids are closed right now. Okay, that's a... so I'm just printing out a part where I can uh, mount my camera up here. Once I get the camera mounted, I'll be able to test it. Mm -hmm. Now, is this going in a skull too, or is this something? Is this going? Uh, if I have time, I'll put it in a second skull. If not, I might just have it like two eyes peeking out of a picture, or you know, or just the blackboard. Yeah. You know. What would be what What would be cool, John, or something to think about, is a Terminator. You know, the Terminator head. Hey, yeah, that's an idea. Yeah. I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have two of them, and they look at each other every now and then, and they have conversations because it's some text to speech. Oh, oh I like that, too. <laughs> that would be cool. Especially, be cool. especially if you could do some image recognition so that if somebody was walking by, you could determine they have a handbag or on a bicycle or something very generic like that. You go, hey, you see that, that person on a, on a bicycle? Yeah. Yeah, I'll haunt them soon enough or something. I don't know. You know yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could do things like that, have the two skulls talking to each other. Yeah. Yeah. What I need is, what I, what I need is uh, a voice uh, altering program. Where I can get the kind of voice I want, where I can record different phrases. Absolutely. Yeah. Something that sounds like, like a skull might, you know, a skeleton might sound like when it speaks, but I haven't found anything. There's got to be an app for that. I mean, I've, I've looked at I've looked at some uh, some software on uh, that uh, at different websites that they make available for free, but the the voice. Uh, all, the voice alterations that they make are really very primitive and very limited in the, in their variety. Mm -hmm. I think you might have to just put that through some filters and, you know, like, uh, you know, the guitar guys have those uh, little foot pedals, right, that they put through 27 of those things to get the sound that they want. And you might just grab some generic Texas speech thing 
and be able to run that through a bunch of electronic stuff local to get that growly thing or whatever you want to do. That, that's what you might be relegated to. Because all the Texas beast things that I've seen up there, they all, want, they all want them to be very nice, very pretty, and very eloquent, and all these other kind of things. Which I don't suspect that's any at all what would come out of the head of a skull. You know? Mm -hmm. That'd be my thoughts anyway. Yeah, I'm, I don't know much about uh, sound programs. It's not much complete noob there. Yeah, I looked at one time, I looked at recording. I had a little recorder, okay? So they would like record 30 seconds of sound. And I wanted to have it in the robot so that when it finished, when it finished its task, whatever, you know, the contest, it would go on to a little spill. And uh, you could get things, but there was so much of it was closed or highly licensed, you know, that was kind of hard. Well, it looks like uh, Doug D's found some stuff. Be interesting to see. The Apple Store's got all kinds of voice changers. Yeah. I found a link to a Apple Linux Store. one that's uh, free to download. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I, I looked at like four or five and I quit looking. They're all free. Yeah. yeah, that Kareem, that lens is pretty close. These are 18 millimeter and those were 16. So measures out to be 18. Wait. So pretty close though. That was my dog voice changer there. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they've got one for Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice, you know? That would be very good. Yeah. <laughs> or a couple of them that said they were celebrities and they had hundreds of celebrities to choose from, so probably. Yeah. Yeah. We got Arnold in there somewhere. I'm sure Android's got a bunch of those too. If if you have an Android instead of an Apple. Mm -hmm. Well, that's neat. Okay. Pat, you got any updates? I've got nothing except I'm running out of time. Okay. Yeah, Doug D. So I did uh, thinking. I did researching. And I ordered a cable for my newly provided iRobot Create, but I haven't done anything. Okay, all right. I've been cleaning up all my robot parts and throwing them into my cabinet and trying to get reorganized. I got side I did organize in a box. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever looked behind me. There's a terrible mess behind me. My wife constantly discusses with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I cleaned up a little bit. How about you, David? Anything today? Okay. Ed? Ed? How about you, John? Uh, no. Okay. I'm busy doing other things. Okay. Okay, did anybody, did, I want to know, I know Pat saw it, did any of you guys see the uh, the TOF sensor that was at Kickstart? Did you all yeah. see that? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I did it, so okay. I think Pat did it. I don't know who else. Yeah, yeah it looks like David yeah. did it. I just want to make sure everybody got their message. How about you, Harold? Did you get a message on that? Yeah, I went and looked at it. I, oh. uh. I decided I've got a whole bunch of things going on right now, so I will let that Kickstarter, I will let the Kickstarter going down the road, and it'll be all right, and I'll be fine with that. Okay. So, it, is, it yeah, looks pretty cool, cool though. Look pretty cool though. Reasonable price for the distance, and yeah. Well, yeah, I, I think the, the fact too that it sounds like they already have it built. They're just, they're just marketing it. Mm -hmm. So there's wow, there's the. Like Let's hope. <laughs> yeah, I want to say the, deli the delivery is. Out. When was the delivery, Pat? It's in it it September. September. That's what I thought, too. Yeah, yeah it's it like. Yeah, yeah, it looked like it was November. Yeah, so. In November? Yeah. Okay, so. Okay. I thought I thought September, but November is still uh, fairly good. Yeah. yeah, reasonable. Okay, well, we'll September. see. All right, if there's anything else, nobody else has anything to, to say, and we're just going to 
Cut it off. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, see you next week.